you know, our worldview looks at plants and trees a lot different than English does. And our language does. Um, for example, these are considered <clears throat> living beings and even like demonstratives like that one, like that's a demonstrative. When, when we talk about the trees, we say, uh oh, right, that one. And we talk about another human or a rabbit or a bear or a fish, we say, uh oh, that one. So they're all part of this living category. If we're saying that one and it's like, a window or a pencil or a computer, right? It's it, you. So even the, the way we point different beings and non-living beings out in the language, we already are categorizing the trees and plants this way. So understanding this is a little bit of the lens we look at the world through helps you see that when you start categorizing yourself with the trees, and in some cases, even calling them Nokomis, right? My grandmother or Nimishomis, my grandfather, because there's some trees that, you know, different teachings have that you, you call them that. You're really bringing yourself, you're opening up who you're related to. You're bringing yourself closer to these beings. And then you're, you're talking about them with the same verbs and descriptions that you're talking about your family, because they are part of your family. We are interrelated and connected to them. And when you get to that level, your, your world is bigger, your family is bigger, your relationships are bigger, your friends are bigger, and you're, you're not alone. Just having that alone can be really, really powerful, can be really um, healing, can be uh, a huge step in the revitalization and reclamation of our, of our indigenous languages and cultures.